Welcome back. Now we're going to analyze our video using the tracker software. So pull up tracker. And we're going to put our video in. Notice I'm actually going to be using a different video than the one I recorded previously. <clears throat> this is because of the software which was used to record that particular video is problematic. So uh, we need to rotate this. So we right click on the screen, go down to filters, new, rotate. And it shows you with little errors to say which way to rotate. There it is. And let's close this. And let's go full screen. Okay, we want our stick. Where's our stick? Calibration stick. Now, in this particular video, I actually, we actually did use the meter stick. But even if you didn't use the meter stick, this will still work, the calibration stick. Just click between the two points where, that you know the distance between. Then click on the number itself, and then you can modify that number to whatever. Uh, in the last video, if we were had been able to use it, I would have been clicking on the top of one shelf and the bottom of the other, and then I would be entering the number 93.5 here. Whatever units you use for that calibration stick are the units that your answers are going to be in. Therefore, these answers are going to come out to be in centimeters and centimeters per second. So now we want our axes. Let's bring the axis. We don't want the axis all the way up there. We would like it to be down on the floor. You may want to rotate this slightly. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's that far off. Let's just try doing it that way. Okay. Would like to zoom a little bit more. Zoom 100%. Yes. Let's go up here. All right, and we want to create a point mass. Let's say. And we want to shift, and I'm actually going to be using the manual tracker for this. To give us a little error there. Just click. Click in the middle of the coffee filter. Over here on the right, let's go ahead and change this to Y position instead of X position. Shift and click. Kind of in the middle of these blurbs. And take the middle of the coffee filter each time. Look at the numbers. Don't too far. There it is. There you are. There it is. Let's go down a little bit. Down. Okay. And that should be enough. Let's zoom back out. Let the zoom to fit. And let me actually just go ahead and bring this over here. Like so, this is video. And I should be able to close that without deleting it. Thank you. All right, now we want to right click on this. And we want to click Analyze. We want to make this so that it's uh, a bit more readable. Oops, sorry. There we go. That's what I want. And down to zero. That looks good. 
This one does look good. It's very good. Uh, now you can see is there's going to be a first couple of frames here where it looks like it's uh, kind of going like in a curved path. Uh, you don't want that. We do want the statistics and we want the curve fits. And we want it for this part where it's more or less going in a straight line. So let's just uh, do these right here. There we go. And we have several points that make it in a straight line. Now, what we want you to do for your screenshot in this particular case is to take this, pull it over to the side to where you can see the dropping and you can see the plot. So I will tap print screen here. All right, now let's look at, uh, see what happens. We have an A parameter here which is the parameter of the t. So if we notice something that's moving with a constant velocity, so that would be v times t. And it's negative 2.02 e2. The e2 is the like the exponentials on a calculator. So that is e10 to the power 2, or 100. So this is 202 centimeters per second. That is the terminal velocity that you record for the number of coffee filters featured here. Do the same process for the other videos except for we only do need one screenshot here. And uh, we'll be back with the last video to see how to take those velocities and find out about air friction.